because I'm a navigator. Navigate on that. Do you threat me there? I've got to put my arm on the bill for this and that. What did I say? Like? I'll put that fist in your face. <laughs> what are you charging? <laughs> no, you get no <laughs> loads of presents. Get out! <laughs> She's mental, she is. Totally deranged, she is. <laughs> She's so funny. Are you guys, everyone, okay? Sorry, I'm a little bit late, but life's still watering. I think I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm sorry for swearing, but there's any ladies on. I'm on audits. Are you, son? You okay? Uh, Brian, mate, yeah. Uh, I've met Peter DeVox today. I was speaking to Peter. I wanted honor to hear his voice and speak a little proper voice to him. Lovely, lovely young man. His cat jumped on the bed, not my bed, on in there. I went, it's your fucking cat, Peter Stone. This, my eyes start to water. As soon as you mentioned the cat, he's laughing his head off. We were on the phone for about 40 minutes. Me and my freedom and uh, Emma, yeah, it was good. I'm going to answer one, no stress is best. Yes, you're right, this is stress. Stress is the killer when you have cancer. Stress is the killer when you've got blood pressure. Stress is the killer when you're going through the boss and all that stuff. And stress is at the fucking top. They're, in, they're saying now it's worse than anything. That's the thing, you get all the other things on top of it, but then the stress makes your cancer fucking, it grows quick and everything because you're stressing. Because what happens, your chemicals in your body, what you produce normal, you get the fight or flight one, so the fight or flight makes you want to run or fight, so they go through the roof. And when they go up in abundance, it makes everything else go up your blood pressure, your, um, your sweat more, and everything. So, yeah, but it, people don't realize it's like, for instance, if you're saying you're in a car and you see something in front of you and go, get the fuck away, you take them so your fight or flight still goes up. So you're using it, and then them, them chemicals we're using, they're full of poisons, full of chemicals, and it really, really makes you ill. Especially if you do it in the mornings, first thing in the morning, it's the worst, because you just have hormone stress levels are higher. I think that about two hours after you get out of bed, they go really, really high. So you've got to be really calm when you only get whatever you get. Was the sad clip, these 1980s prison documentary, I've never seen that sort uh, The prisons were terrible in the 80s. You had to piss and shit in a, in a bowl um, like that. Like, like, you know, you get a wash. You get one of them to wash with. You had a little plastic bucket about that big. You couldn't sit on it some on my side. So you'd have to hold it in. Fucking what gruesome it was. And you had to poo in a bucket. And then you'd hold it in and get out to the toilet. And you'd be sat like this. There'd be like 500 people going past you. Walking, all right, right, you're all right. You're on the toilet. You're like that. Fucking bright red in Barrison. You're trying to have good, like another two. And we're going, you're all right. Yeah, fucking hell, it's bad. So the doors are running up to there. So you sat on the toilet. Like, don't show you that fucking porridge. They're on the telly in Slade Prison. So them jails were horrific. They were like the you, uh, Napoleon, 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 whatever it was. There were them prisons that were made then. So they were like fucking hundreds and hundreds of years old prisons. Some of them are thousand years old. Durham's a really old prison. Well, for me, for the scruffiest one out of them all was Liverpool. It was the most horrible one for um, you know, the rats and things like that, and pigeons is what fucking terrible it was. Durham was really bad in the early 80s when I went there as well. Durham was really bad because them, them pigeons are flying fucking rats, that's what they are. They've got more germs. They've got about 200 different things you can catch, or other pigeons can catch and other people can catch over 200 different germs that can, can carry western the western fucking rats and we can fly about but when you look out and the search the big set types are on it, it looks like when it's raining it looks like it's sorry it looks like it's raining because there's millions of um please please coming off the fuckers i used to shut my windows thing fuck that and you'd shut the window and you could see all the little bits where the, where, the, where the light would hit it and it just looked like snow coming down because of tiny little fleas fucking horrible so i was in the pads in liverpool Sitting there, I was with a lad called Mark Styles. They run the doors called Cream in Liverpool. So I'm sat there. The next minute, what the fuck? Like that, I was on the bottom bunk, he was on top. What I like to do was sit ups, roll off the bed, and press up, and then roll back down. I used to do like 50 press ups, busy sit ups, and leave it an hour and keep doing that all day. I love fucking probably four or five sit ups, 100 sit ups a day, and press ups every day. And that was the job. So I jumped on the top where the, where the window was. 
and a big fucking long tail about that long. And it was fucking, it was like a cat, like a big massive cat. Ran past the window and here to the screw. Fucking big watch running past the fucking windows. They bite you, you get wheels designed to fucking kill you. I said, listen, he went, oh. I said, you need to fucking something like a rat catcher or something. He went, we've got one. I said, well, where is he? He said, he's doing three months next door. You beat his wife up. He was the next door, the fucking rat catcher. He had a, he had a dog, he used to catch them. I said, do you cunt, fucking rats in here because you've been fucking fighting. I think he, 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 he had a altercation with his wife. I don't know what happened, I can't remember. But I know he was doing three months. But uh, assaulting his wife, fucking hell. I said, you would be in there. would be in here now when I'm fucking in. Big fucking horrible things as well. <coughs> John Usher, Robert Rothbotham, you, you're from, how's oh, that, are you not, is that from Hartlepool? I don't know what Robotham's from Hartlepool, good boxers, Tony Robotham from Hartlepool, really good fighter, really nice lad, really good, he's, he's only a lad, really little, they can't have up and have a go, really good lad from Hartlepool, probably my nose is fucking in my eyes going, fucking hell, it's all the fucking pieces, mate, honest to God. Thank you for all the support of all of you who have been on here. I can't thank you enough. Obviously, I can't mention much because I've got that copper who's now there, so with Emma. And we've also got the complaints police involved now, which have been involved for about two months or something. So they're like obviously working hand in hand with them now. So these buddies, the set person, well, I promised the cop I wouldn't say his name, which I haven't done in the last so many videos. And he's just been on that idiot, pretending to be somebody else. Saying, I bet you mentioned such and such, trying to draw me out to say the name, but I won't do it because I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool. When I give my word, I don't care who it is. I'm not the word, I'm not fucking bond. And you keep that. You keep, you don't tell lies to people. The only time you tell lies is to the police, if it's beneficial for you. But in my case, the great thing is when you tell them to police, police or anyone the truth, you shine. A traveler said to me once, he said, when you lie, people can see right through you. When you're telling the truth, you just you just know people telling the truth. You can tell by the body language. And I always remember it, he said, you shine when you're telling the truth. Hangman audits, nice. Uh, Hangman, only the lonely, one, two, three. I hope you're okay. Christopher Gillen, hello, Christopher. Hello, Brian and Emma. Hello, Freedom. Hangman audits, lovely that Hangman. He's clever. He's really, really clever, Hangman audits. Really, really intelligent. You know, like, super, super intelligent. Like, he was keeping up with me, so... Not many people can keep up with me. Really, really clever lad he is. But yeah, really nice kid, kid as well. I'm in audits, uh, pigeons, uh, yeah, uh, rats. <laughs> yeah, that's it's horrible to say, but they are the fucking what so many parrots are the same parrots. I had a parrot. I just sell it. It was saying the guns are under the patio. He's got fucking bodies outside. He's doing an arm robbery to man. <laughs> Just kidding. I thought one of his dad's fucking gassing me up. He, yeah, he's got guns in the locks. He's trying to shoot me three times this week. Hello. <laughs> okay, now. It was uh, Amazon Green, not Great, Green. From the Amazon, the Green one. Uh, I had it. I called it Herman, no, Herman Munster, the Munsters. It was a cunt. So when he used to come in the living room, when he come in, he used to put the key to the cause with the battle face. <laughs> Scream like that in the cage and open the cage up. Because you can't let fly about because it can break the neck. So, up the cage, he'd jump on my arm, walk up there, and he'd peck me on the face. as if you couldn't, you've had me in here all day locked in this cage. You didn't like fucking jail. You've got me in here all day. So, he'd get on the shoulder, and then I'd put him on the cage, and I'd walk to the kitchen and go, ah, ah, scream like a lunatic, like a baby. And then I'd run back in. I said, Come on, right, calm down, will you? Get, get him back on. You don't have to stress out, Paris. Got on my shoulder, she said, Be good. Sat there with him on my shoulder. And, to feed him little bits and bobs, and he was class. Herman, they called him. Herman moves to the lift, some of them to lift to over 100 year old. My mate's got the McCall's, they're about fucking seven, eight grand now. I think I think he paid five grand. The, fuck. the only thing is, the shit everywhere, all over the fucking floors, and everything. The filthy, the one I did it was only a little Paris, but then big McCall's fucking beaks on them are huge. I think they're all here, break your fucking fingers. So he's got the yeah, two of them. I can't even, I can't even name them now, the name of them, sorry. But yeah, the hard work, the very hard work. I remember, my mouth's dry. I remember um, a girl who used to do the door for a pair and a brother who used to have a place called Blazers. So they used to be on the crack, both of them. And you know, I used to go in and stop people coming in with the ease. I used to have the doors boxed off. They used to be dormant like Frankie. Frankie couldn't even have those dogs. Frankie couldn't Frankie, 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 Frankie,
uh, and Steve, see Steve, see I love, we used to come and used to do the door card and thank you to the name now, for Tea Biscuit 78 and uh, anyway, the, he went away with the dad and I was doing the club for them, so make sure he was okay and stuff. It was like a, a rave club, but it was all goth people in there and all young kids in that all both about 18, 19, 20. But they're all goths, but they were nice, they were nice kids. It was not all of them, all goths, but there was quite a few. And uh, yeah, I got up with them all. They were like, oh, are you Brian Cockrell? Really little fucking kids, little tiny kids, you know, like fucking, fucking seven stone or something like that, eight stone fucking kids. And they were all, they were all come and shake me on. And then I used to just come in and say, anyone getting bullied, just come and see me. And they'd be in there, oh, yeah, thanks, Brian, thanks, big Brian. They used to love it because they wouldn't let anyone get bullied in any clubs. I always made sure I, I can't stand people being bullied. I fucking hate it. I can't stand bullies. When I was a kid, I got bullied by six lads at school for being Scottish because I had a Scottish accent. And I came down from Scotland when I was three. So I had that accent because I stayed at my nana's for years and years and years. And they were all still Scottish, full broad Scottish. So I always get bullied for that, doing that. And I also got bullied because I couldn't read and write properly because I had dyslexia. They didn't realise it was an illness. They didn't realise them days. They just had no fucking thick. So the teacher would put fucking dunces on your head and say, stand in the corner. Stand this cockerel. How do you spell such and such? I said, don't know, miss. Right, stand on the table. Stand on the table, you dunce. Horrible bastard, you know, when you think about it. And you stand in there and you're supposed to be there helping you and giving you encouragement. And they, 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 they shoot you down in flames in front of everyone say 30 kids in a clap. So you stand on the table and they'll go, how do you spell, say another word, and I go, I can't, don't know how to spell this. Are you thick or something? Get in that corner now. And you'd stand in the corner with a big hat, like a witch's hat with a D on it for a dunce. Fucking terrible. That was when I was about six. six. Terrible. Absolute terrible. Disgusting. Couldn't do it now. It's against a lot of do things like that, but you're supposed to be there to build kids up, not fucking just encourage them. You're supposed to encourage them, not fucking bullying them. The teachers were coming, used to hit. When I was remember being six, you used to get, a, it was like a, Cat and nine tails, it was like a piece of leather that thick, about that long, so about that long, and it had these like tails on the end. And you had to put them up. Most Catholic schools had them and used to get whacked with it so many times, so three times. Sometimes you get more. Oh, they fucking want me sick. Oh, that's a fucking, that's that stuff for me. Some pork, honest to God. Every time we have it, and the whole room's spinning. Now my prostate ain't coming out. Oh, this is bad. I've got to fucking I have to go and think. Oh, there they are. Oh my god, I feel terrible. Just hit you like proper for like, being on a, on, on a swing. Back and forth, I'm gonna throw. Terrible. Oh god, that's terrible. That's terrible. I'm gonna be proper sick. I can't take them tablets because they're, they're tablets where I say they just make you make your cabbage, you know, I'm gonna end up looking at a said person. Looking at that fucking freak, fuck that. Freaky Joe, freaky Joe, we don't look like freaky Joe. And we're on it, we know, it's what's a war. Uh, truth, you, you talking, Pata. Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah, the truth does hurt, mate. The thing is, when you talk the truth, like you say, you shine. When you talk shite, you stuttering, mumbling, bumbling, you can't get the words out, because then the North Side comes out with you, the kids. Your, your mum will get you, you know, your dad, or the police will get you. What time did you go there? What? What? What did you say? What time was it when you went there? What? And you keep saying it so you give yourself time to give to think of something to say. So that's when you know. So you start going, what? You what? You what? You know the line. Because they'll just answer you, wouldn't they? So they'd say, where have you been? I've just been to the shops, Dad. I've just been up to see my Auntie Mary or something. Where they go, you what? What did you say? I never heard you. Well, you're only fucking two feet away. You can clearly hear me. And that's how the cops know when the kids are like. And then they start, what they do is they'll have, say, five or six years. But it's all in one. Terrible. Put his all in one cell and then take one on his own and go, Cockerel's grass you up. It wouldn't be Cockerel, would it? We all know who it would be. <laughs> we all know what the fuck his grass would be, don't we? And go, he's grass you up. And you want and then touch and touch his grass you up. And when you're a kid, obviously you believe it, don't you? But we we had that done with like I was really young, so we knew well, my granddad just say, whatever they say to you, don't say nothing, son. Don't say nothing when I was a kid. And we we um my uncles and I used to say, don't tell the police now, just don't say a thing. If they ask any questions, say, my uncle told me not to say nothing. I didn't say no comment because I didn't understand the law then. But if you get dicked anyone, don't make a comment until your sister comes because you might say something that's really con it'll con condemn you. 
and you can't retract it because you've already said it then. Uh, I'm finishing now, it's pushing down, had toughy bird rain, all that bird. Cat man, oh, you cat man. I felt terrible once. Dizzy, smelled like Dizzy, smelled feel sick. Yeah, the truth hurts. Oh, come on. They will make that your mate snitch, even though they never, yeah, they pretend that that's what they do. That's the best trait they do when you're only about seven, eight year old. The trickier. He's told me, I went, no, he has not. Don't tell me. I remember getting this for, for the, one of the first time. First time I taxed someone to 20 pence, it was. My mate took 20 pence off it. It was only a fucking copper's son. Fucking, we got 20 pence off him. Oh, no, 50 pence, it was 50 pence, sorry. 50 pence and 20 pence, yeah, it was 70 pence. And we got, it was only a copper's fucking son and the fucking copper was off duty. And he come out with a kid driving around and he nicked us in the fucking street on there uh, in Hartlepool and West. West type, West Few Road, it was West Few Roads in Hartlepool, West Type Roads in Redcastle, get mixed up a bit because of the same type of name. So the pull us in the car and he really took us in, he was like plain clothes, CID. And he went in this over the road. There used to be a bingo. It's not bingo. It's a bingo. It was a bingo in the end, but it used to be a cinema called the Fairway. And the cop station was on that side. It's all. It's, I think it's still there. It's, I think it's a theatre now. Where you can, oh fuck! I'll get one for. Oh, I can't believe. <coughs> I'll subside soon. I go. <coughs> <coughs> Terrible. The bed's fucking horrible. I usually take that at bedtime, you know, when you lay down, it's not so, so, so harsh. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. That's where I felt tonight. Well, yeah, I've, been, I've been out in the sun because it's been boiling here today. Well, it's this morning, for about 20 minutes, fucking face is bent. I must felt sick today, I know. I'm on 16 valve, you okay, son? So anyway, they got us, they took us across, the, they put us on the back, you know, the gates up, and they took us in the back way. Anyway, they had a safe up. Two guns in the safe. The best time I've ever seen a gun in my life, apart from on the telly. It was like a little tiny gun, like a little, like a 36. Uh, Wolf is going to screech when I get Eli out the kitchen. Yeah. That would be a fucking float, I think. Not much screech. I'm very fucking there. Yeah, see, I'd need to see. Because Eli. Because oh, so, Eli's, get, Eli's getting out. Wolf's jealous. So he wants to be with Eli. Now, when he hears me talking, like he's been here now, you can hear him barking because he wants to hear me, mate. He wants to cuddle and kiss me. It's like a big teddy bear. So then the other, the other one, then he gets jealous. It's fucking nightmare, dude. They tried to secret comfort. Yeah, the other fucking guns. So anyway, going back to the, 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 he did it deliberately, but the safe was left open. You, when you roll, you realize you'd open it, you were like, guns in there, like that. So I'm trying to scare him, but I was like, I was like, oh. Could get that gun, they wouldn't see me. I'm trying to pinch the gun out of the fucking safe. Though, yeah, I was thinking, I could go to the toilet and sneak my hand up there. We'd have a gun. So I wanted to get the gun in the fucking PlayStation. I think give a fuck, being there. And they used to get you, we used to go to the pools, 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 what's it called? Pools, pools, something. I can't remember pools, fucking football club, that's it. Pools football club. We used to go. The cop was well six foot two then. So I bought, or maybe he had to be six foot, six, six, six foot one of me was. But with the helmet on, the big helmets with it about fucking five inches. They look massive, look like about four yikes, look about seven foot. So we used to get on the wall, get near the wall, and get half, halfway up and get your hand to hog, hog, hog your up, get your hand like that. So I say I'm getting back because I can do that now. I couldn't do that before. So you hog them up like that and get your hands in there and push them up and get them over. He's there and then he pulls yourself over. And then you get down and all of a sudden you'll feel something grab your feet. Oh, some help as you get down, it's only fucking policeman got you, and boom, you're right up the fucking arse, I'll slap you right across the fucking lugs, oh, your ears are fucking kill them, boom, you're up the arse, we've been pepped off the mountains on, and kick you out, but then we used to go around the other way, and go under the billboard, there's been a big billboard, we used to go underneath it, and sneak along the, the billboard at the bottom, and sneak in, there's a bit of broken fence, we used to go, to pull the fence out, we could get in, Yeah, we used to also go to the stock car racing, on a Sunday, we used to go on the roof of the uh, library, and sit on the roof and watch the stock car racing, it was good, you know, like, Never paid without them days. We sneaked in bath, the bats and everything. We sneaked in. But one of us won the pictures, and the other one would go and open the door. I let two of us in. So we get, I think it was about 15, 20 pence to get in the cinema. But we'd open the, you know, the emergency door, and two of us would get in. Edinburgh, I am East, Lothian. Nice Edinburgh. But my nanny used to go there every year to, for the pipe bands. So I think there's about 140 bands when my nanny, my, my, well, 
but my ma, and then Scott McCauley, but you your grandpa, you know, my nana, my ma, so my ma used to go there every year when we go to gym. He was in the army, he was ex army, and play the pipes, fucking electric, electrified. And I used to, we used to go to the Scottish matches, me and John Garland, he's from Edinburgh, that's where he's from, and we used to go up and you'd hear them on the field, and when you could hear them, well, the noise in the band and all the pipes going, you can feel like you're on a battleground, you know, like against the English and the old guys, you can feel the battle on the, on the battleground, it's fucking mad. And all the hairs on the back of your neck stand up as if you're going to war. It's fucking brilliant. I haven't been for years. Dundee. 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 Yeah, I used to go to the uh, Hampton Park, it was called, the football ground. I think it's still there. I think it was the, I think it was actually the biggest football ground in, I think it held more than Wembley. I'm, I'm almost certain it was massive. We were there the night. We were there the night when they played Australia and he had a Datsun, I remember it was a brown Datsun car and we got there and this big long street starts with P, the Prince, Prince, Prince of the Street or something, it starts with a P, anyway we were in this pub and uh, we met this man and woman and this kid, what say we just made, anyway later on we were at the, the match with about 100,000 people there, and the same people who were in the pub stood fucking next to us in the, in, in, Hundred thousand to one chance to send the next to them. We were stood next to them. It was unbelievable. So they had the Scottish fans had kangaroos on the on the noose around them, still hanging them. There's, there's only band there. But yeah, it was good. But when the English come, the English used to have to get escorts off the bus because the Scottish used to want to attack them. But the Welsh they were all right, and the Irish it was just for the wars, you know, when they, were, when they stopped them, when they killed and stuff. So that when they go up there, and they used to have a pre nocti it was called, where the king. Or the lot, the lairds, not the lords, it's the laird, the laird up there. He was allowed to shag whoever was like in that area, like a chieftain was like a, like a, like uh the chief or like a chief of the Indian type of thing. So he was the chief, chieftains were called in the, the old Gaelic. So they were allowed to have sex with the wife on the first night. Fuck that. So that's what they used to do. They used to have sex with the wives. They had, had pre nuptial I think it was called, that was the name of it. They were allowed to have sex with them or the on like anyone's wife because they owned the land. Fucking that's terrible. Isn't it? No, they fucking ate the English. And they stopped them speaking, stopped them speaking Gaelic. She said, What do they speak? Chuktas, they live in the Highlands, right up in the Highlands. And uh, they stopped them there wearing the, wearing the kilt as well. She's fucking wrong with it. It's terrible. Pork testers outside, puppy as well. Yeah. Terrible that puppy farm. Fucking, he just pulled, pulled, pulled them. Um, the bitches are just completely knackered. But instead of leaving them, like I say, breeding them and leaving them for a year and a half or something, and then having another one maybe, maybe even for two years, the fucking every, every, I don't know this, so to have the pups, they have them bumps, a couple of months, but they've got them fucking done again, especially people like the bull terriers. Because you get bull terriers, you can get about 10 or 12, 14, 15 bull terriers, English bull terriers in there. They're the massive. Sorry, they're only small, and there's because the, the, the bitches always have about 15, 14, 15, and they're about three and a half to five, they're about three and a half, four, but four, five, six grand, some of them now. The ones we, we got Eli, it was 2,600 quid, but we got him for 2,000 pounds. So Emma went and got him on the on the train, train towards, towards um, Wales, it was, she got him. It was a Cheshire, I think it was Cheshire, she got him from, and his, his brothers and sisters were out the other week. And they just look identical, like little Eli's, identical. So when he was a baby, come here, and he stood on the set, you can see him, he's like as big as that fucking, he's as big as that little, little tiny pup. He's like that. He's, you know, he's Roman from nose he's got, and they have the head stood out. And he's trying to, he's trying to attack Scrappy. And he's like that little mouse, jumping on Scrappy. John McLean was here. If you're watching John, um, love to you and your family here. He, John helps us all the way through this fucking shit that we've had as well. He was there with us as well, great lad he is, John. I love him all the while, so he was having loads of shit off that deck of fucking dickhead. And I said, you, you fucking cunt. If you want to go with him, I'll, I'll fucking meet you. And he just fucking got, he went to the police twice with me and that cunt. Supposed to be a, a fucking big hard man, supposed to be a tough guy, went to the fucking police. You've heard the videos with him, the DVDs, I went up there, the phone calls with him. So we're going, oh, we all know we're saying that. We, you know what that idiot, the little idiot saying that, uh, I'm going to DH Court trial when video is 
according to your son Bach. Yeah, he's fucking mental, isn't he? So you're Craig Spain, he's with Ralph, we did a video with him. Remember his missus? Yeah, tiny was next to me. He went, oh, can I laugh feel like that? He said, like a little kid. I said, you had a little fucking kid. <laughs> He's laughing like fuck. His missus was nice lady. Yeah, we got on with him, of course. VC, what's that mean? Victoria Cross. Victoria Cross, that was the, the medal handed out in rock strips for the Zulus when they had us. We're going to get to fucking him in a minute. So we're going to get to the main subject, which is. I know quite a lot about it. I am rehearsed in it. So, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy had a brother called Robert Robert Kennedy. Very, very people don't know this, but they were actually the, I mean, the dads, the gangsters, the people in the prohibition. They were proper gangsters. They worked with the, the prohibition, like, um, what was he called? Fucking Scarface. He worked with him. Al Capone. All them type of people that work with them doing the uh, prohibition where it was allowed in canada so these would bring across the border from canada in, Amer in america and have like speakeasies where they'd sell the drink from really really big money used to make off it but the cops were all in that as well it was always, always the cops into every fucking thing they were in on that as well from day one so they then decided that they were going to that they were working with the ira as well really high the ira kennedy's really powerful very powerful people probably the most one of the powerful families that ever ever been in america so corrupt as fuck without a shadow of a doubt so when the war when the war kicked off i think it was 55 to 75 the vietnam war which is 20 years which i didn't realize it was that long 20 fucking yeah that was seven or eight years so in 1963 i think it was he decided that he was going to stop i think it was 63 he decided he was going to do two things one was he was going to he was going to he then actually decided he was going to blow the lid off the aliens he had a piece of paper two pieces of paper one was for the aliens and one was to take shut down the the war the vietnam war because he because he thought it's just a big sham and it's just a big money he knew it's a big money thing so it was something like three thousand helicopters and so many every so many months getting built for that war a lot of people got rich off that war but it wasn't just off the helicopters and the new munition factories and the weapons and the guns and stuff it was also the drugs so what they were doing vietnam full of heroin so they're bringing that from there and they were bringing in the, the mainly the black soldiers were putting in the bodies of them and put like five six and they came so i would saw them up put them in body bags no one's well, nobody's got a fucking look and they were bringing over so they were getting their heroin there and they would sell it all over and it was going to places like Fino Castro's and all them fucking type of places it was going all over the place but it was obviously from the CIA were involved again as usual the CIA the CIA not the FBI CIA they're always there they're the military type style so he decided that he was going to shoot down the war so 10 days before he got he got he got shot I think it was he got shot 10 or 10 or 20 days before when he got shot was it 63 i think he got shot 64 for camera it was now he got shot 10 10 or 20 days before he'd already said i'm going to divulge these two papers and one was about alien alien entities that are real and they do exist and he wanted to go into where the aliens were and expose the conspiracy theory and uh, that's one of the one one of the two that's the two reasons to stop him so what they've done they had a bloke called lee out harvey oswald lee harvey oswald's with a divvy, bit of a divvy um one of these old fucking one minute he wants to be a patriot the next minute he's going to russia to be defect there and be a communist so when he went there they, they wouldn't they wouldn't they would, he stayed there for two years but what people say is he was put there by the cia they put him in there as a cover undercover operative but the thing was so it was to shoot kennedy this is where they, they called the patsy the club which we call an escape court so he was already linked to them type of people paramilitary people communists so he went from there and they wouldn't give him his passport so he cut his wrists cut his wrists i think he did and he and he burned his passport he went fucking mental so then he went back to america and when he went back to america he was on the streets in america selling stuff so they had him videoed again 
funny how they kept video on him all the time so this is to show you what he was doing so they could later on blame him for the shooting of john f kennedy so he he had, he had a girl he was he married there i think she was russian as well but he was linked to different other people they had him in different places in i think he went to castro's place i think he was seen now she was seen there as well so they tried to link him into it as well i think fidel castro was tried the, the american government with, with the gangsters because the gangsters he took all the gambling back off them and took all the casinos closed them on and they won the war so he won the war and kicked all the gangsters out where you see in the films so they were fuming them as well so the, the american gap um gangsters the mafia tried to kill him 25 assassinations i think there was on him and he survived them all he was a hero to the country so the kennedy was getting more and more people upset because he was having affairs with Marilyn Monroe and so was his brother Robert was having him she was coming in parties divulging information so she had to go so she she suffered from she couldn't sleep and she suffered from really bad constipation she couldn't go to the toilet so what they used to do they used to do an enema like an enema with water warm water soap and they put it in put her legs up in them from my backside put it in and the soap would go in so would go in and make it easy for the pup to poo and it would come out like a like a, a, a you know what do you call it a, a water bottle would come out and that but what they reckon they done when they tested it inside there was no barbiturates which is drugs no drugs there was no like saying to overdose and things like that but what they've done is they actually put it in the bottle and then put it in the backside and you know yourself the capillaries in your backside are tiny i, mean, I remember a lot of lads used to put ease up the backside or they used to put acid um in their eyes and so could they blood vessels were there you'd be off the head quicker so they killed there as well she was she was definitely definitely killed but there's a conspiracy between we don't know which one it is for 50, i think it's i think they say the mafia is 55 percent it was them and then some people say it was the cia but i, I believe cia because they're all fucking stinky bastards they're all in you know, that white people i wouldn't blame other people and, i mean look what they did they invented the crack cocaine he actually invented crack cocaine to stop the black people in harlem and places like that where in the amendment they're allowed to carry arms bear arms they're allowed to walk around with weapons as long as they've got a license so it'd be like 20 black lads berries on marching and think like, hell he's getting too powerful then when jesse old i think it was in 1974 was on there black power the panthers when these are too powerful we need to get rid of these so how can we get rid of them you think about it you get someone on heroin you know the foot in the, the, the compass went this fall to pieces uh and also uh yeah and also the the, the the things what they were saying so kennedy was making more and more the gangsters hated him because he was one of the only ones he said i'm going to take you fuckers down type of thing and he was the fully fully on but his, his family were gangsters so it makes sense to me that I, I don't think it was the mafia i don't think so so what happened is that day that day he's supposed to have had the um what they call the president center cabinet the, the secret service i think it was a secret service supposed to mind him and they're supposed to stand on the cabinet, put the hand on the carrier the bullet there hand that side the hand there hand there i think it's usually six but this day there wasn't they took them off and they actually put the secret service somewhere else miles away and you can see where he's supposed to have shot him now leave lee harvey Os oswald was just a crap absolute shit at shooting he couldn't shoot the same as that i probably couldn't shoot better than i am and he's supposed to have got three rounds off he had to run down two flights of steps get the gun from behind where it was hit get it off then bang 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 three times and go back put up a right where it was hide it again and when he said he came down he just looked at me he said there was no sweat on there was no nothing the people so it wasn't him so what what they're saying is the rightfully had you won't believe the rifle and you'd think well 20 grand or something 20 quid it was like 20 dollars 20 fucking dollars probably fucking was it eight quid or something them days so it was not it fucking it wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't them it wasn't him because the weapon he had was shite so the other was a patsy like i said <coughs> and he, <coughs> he was in that building but when you look out the window the, what they've done they've got they've got lasers now and all the stuff and they put the pictures up they can do it all they've had 82 people out of the hospital in the hospital 
when he was shot. I think it was Dallas he got shot, wasn't it? I think. And then they took the Boston, I think it was. So they shot him, and 82 people said he was dead. Uh, whatever, what 82 people said he died in, in a certain way. And what happened is the pathologist who did the autopsy on him had never done a gunshot one in his life. So why the fuck would they give it the most powerful man in the world? Some fucking bloke wasn't ever done an autopsy, that was to cover it up. And then they moved the body from one place to another. I think it was to Boston. So they could cover it up. And then there was all the people in there involved. And the people in there were generals. They were all different types of people. So they think it was definitely the government because they were all, all together in that room. And then there was another room scene where these his agents were where they're supposed to look after. They were laughing and joking in this place and he'd been killed. So they're trying to say these people are lying, these 82 people. And also, what happened is, there's a motorbike cop on a motorbike, and he's this side. When he gets shot, he was shot from the side of the head. So the bloke on the other side, it's like a picket fence, he's got a hole there, and he shoots through the fence and shoots, and you can see his head for bullets. And they're trying to say he got shot. three bullets hit, hit him. So the three bullets that hit him are supposed to be, how could it be shot from the side here? And Harvey Lee Harvey Oswald was at the top it like that. He'd have to come down that trajectory. He couldn't go sideways. So when they come out, he got shot, they said. It ricocheted and it was called the magic bullet. What a load of fucking cack. So the magic bullet hit him and went out there, come back in and his knee and hit his arm. What a load of shite to come out with. But no one would dare ever find the fucking government guilty. No, anyone on the jury would shit themselves doing death. So they found them obviously not guilty, but we all know it's the most, it's the most ever murder case unsolved out of every murder that's ever been. It's, there's more books being written about that than any other murder case, and there's more information in, on that one than anything. Uh, so when they shot him, it was from the side. So they reckon it could have been different people were involved, but they say the Mafia, but when they say the Mafia was called, uh, let me think, Jack Ruby was called, Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby was, uh, it was worked for the Mafia, but he was like a Mafia boss. He was just a, a worker like for strippers and things. So he wasn't big, but he was in and out of the police station all the time. So they said they could use him to get in the police station because he was in and out of the police station all the time, this uh, Jack Ruby. And uh, they used him and he, he got killed. He walked out and, and shot Lee Harvey Oswald, killed him. And then Lee Harvey Oswald was killed. But why would you bring out someone who's just killed the president? But the front gates, where everyone to see, they'd put, you'd have two cars, you'd have one going that way, one going that way, and probably a van out the back. Put him in the mail bag and throw him in the back of the fucking so nobody could see him. Bulletproof windows and bulletproof fucking uh, vehicle. Why would they take him out walking with handcuffs on and get him shot? So then Jack Ruby mysteriously was killed as well. So no one ever knew who who killed him. But it's definitely a governor, I think. I definitely think it's the CIA and the operatives involved. I don't think Castro had anything to do with it because it wasn't beneficial for him. He was always a straight, straight, straight as hell he was. He was a politician. So he wouldn't want, he had nothing to gain and everything to lose. Why would he want to kill the president of America when it would destroy him? And uh, that's who I think, I think that's what's happened with them. But the, um, the CIA, they, they did invent crack cocaine as, as well. They had it in the streets in, the, the, in, in America and in, where was the place to put it? Um, it's called Co Cocaine Cowboys. Uh, what they called? I think this place, Miami, put it in Miami. Now, Miami's closer to Mexico to get the drugs. So, we used to have these airplanes coming in. It was 25 grand a key. I think they were getting for it. They were paying something like five grand a key. So, the people flying it in were getting five grand for dropping it. So, Miami was just like red, like a little tiny town, like Red Cap, a little fucking nothing, little tiny place. So, there was something like 400, 600 banks, I think it was, or 400 banks in the whole of. America, Miami Bank was taking six from like six hundred and sixty million pound, and all the banks in America were taking four hundred million. So it showed you all the money was going through there. So Miami was built on cocaine. It got massive, and in the gardens you'll see if you watch it. It's called the Cocaine Cowboys. If you see it, you'll see them. He says, "I had six hundred million pound. This is a fucking pilot." So the pilots would only get say two or three because we're just couriers. But the ones who were behind the false walls and stuff, they were getting like fucking 30, 40, 50 years. You get more, more jail for cocaine than you do for killing someone because 
the cocaine can kill millions of people, thousands of people. And they just um they just were doing what they want. So there was this black lass come through and she thought she was a clever cunt. And she was going around assassinating other people. So then the machine come up, machine gun come out, a little kid got shot, and then that's when the FBI come and took shut the whole lockdown. I can't remember her name now, but she was loopy, she was there, she was she was killed. There's been a few films made about that. And she was like ruthless what they killed people. She had a hit on someone at the airport with thousands of people going through the airport. She was fucking mental. And yeah. If anyone anywhere happens, if a document the heart attack gun, it turns out it's true. Yeah. There's all sorts of things where you're saying that the the shoot the one behind him was shoot and he shot under here. It was like the, the one who was driving the vehicle. The one sat next to me, they done that and he shot through the back of him and shot him. So the three bullets went into him. But they're saying it ricocheted, it was called the magic blood I think I know what a fucking cack. So shit, why would you move him from that area and move him somewhere else? You just do in the hospital there. Why would you give him a fucking doctor who's never done an autopsy on someone that powerful or someone who's been shot? That was just to cover it up. So it didn't look it looked really bad what they done, really bad. But uh, and he got shot as well, didn't he? Bobber got shot, it was fucking terrible. But he was still going for the mafia. Room. I think they might have killed him. I really don't think the, the mafia might have done him in because he wouldn't back down to them. He was, he was a fucking powerful person. But they with them for the mafia are powerful as well, and they? but they're not nowhere near as big, big as they used to be. Like the old ones, if you slap one in the old days, they, they would you'd be that would be a finish, you'd be the dead or sort of John Elite went. The power of the mafia is a load of shit, Brian. It used to be in the 30s and 20s. He said, now, I've, I've bashed a few and nothing's fucking happened to me. He said, now, give a couple of slaps. And they made men and all that. He said, the old school there, like in the 1950s and 40s, would pop a drink. But he, John knows that he was in that, fucking, in that for years, you know, the mafia. He's doing well, John. If you're watching, we love you, John. What a great lad he is. So when he was doing the interview with me, talking, he went, well, your name has been coming over to America. You'll see that I put it up as an anchor. You can watch it. John talking about me. He said, So the tax man, the stories of the tax man have been coming over the pond, they call it, for years and years and years. So for you, for me to come on here and tell my story, he says, I know all about you, Brian. He said, I've been watching you for a long time. You're a stand up guy. I don't have to go and check nothing because you let the, the papers tell it and the stories of the people where you live all talk about you, all, all the people backing up. You've got nothing to prove to anyone. He says, I get trolls as well. I was talking about the trolls. Where they're just little dibbies, he says. They're not even worth a fucking mention, he says. Well, he's really, really, he, my IQ is good. He's just fucking unreal. He's super, super intelligent, but he's super loyal, really loyal. When I was pulling, he was driving, his son was pulling in hospital. He pulled over and he went, this is my big friend, Brian Cox, you can beat this, right? You can do this. You're one of the toughest guys I've ever met. I never know you can do this big man, which just gives, gives you a nice boost, you know, something like that type of power who's backing you up and giving you encouraged to keep going. So it was like people like them and David Ashton and Megan, who's my friends from America, they're two barristers, absolutely love the both of them. They've been all the way there with us. And uh, they've helped us all the way from this case and things like that, what we've gone through. It's fucking absolute nightmares the last four years. But there is, this, like they'll tell you, they've got out the lights at the end of the tunnel, Brian. He said, you can see the light, and I, I can't, kind I of really can't, kind of can see Jesus. I watched the film Jesus with, um, Bert, what's he called? Bert Lancaster, yeah. Well, the, the, when he was the gladiator, it was fucking marvellous, that film. I watched that the other day, and I've seen Jesus falling, he was giving him water. You still get a lump, don't you? But Jesus, when he dies on the cross, it's really, really sad. And you sit there and you think, Turn on when Lord forgive them, but they not know what they do. And he forgive them all. Because the Lord Jesus, the Lord, his father was going to send down all the in all the it's fucking I I <laughs> send down all the angels, hundred million angels to come on and wipe out mankind completely. And he said, No, don't do that. He, he begged them type of thing. He knew Jesus when he was in Gethsemane, which is the garden where he came over and kissed him on the cheek, Judas. And that was to tell them that's who he is. Like that's Jesus. the one I kiss is Jesus, and he went, I forgive you, Judas. So he knew. So Judas later on, 30 pieces of silver, I think it was, he ended up hanging himself for guilt, killed himself. The same Mary, Marilyn Monroe died at home, but definitely was whack. Yeah, she was killed. She was definitely killed. She was killed because she was opening her mouth really 
she was having sex with both of them. I thought she was beautiful. A be- one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. Absolutely stunning. She was a little bit overweight, but she was stunning. She couldn't sing, she couldn't act, but she was just beautiful. And uh, yeah, she got killed because she was walking in going, I'm, you know, I am, I'm the girlfriend, the president of America. And obviously he had his wife and things like that, so it ruined it for them. But I thought, how ironic, he's the president of America and both he's having sex with them. And you call them people, fucking names in the Congress. Yeah, fucking mad, isn't it? Can't mind the documentary side. Yeah, it's fucking terrible in it what they've done. I think they were I think they were good people. I really do for Kendys. I think they were good people. They were definitely corrupt. The dads were. They were gangsters. They used to work like the same with fucking Lucky Luciano and people like that. They were Lucky Luciano was him and another one, I can't remember here now, who actually did the mafia where they had five families where they said, Look, you can't kill him without us all talking together. So that's how they used to do it, which was great if you think about it. You have that permission of like two or three families, like in New York, where I think it was. I think there was the one where uh, Miami, I think there was the was where Tony Soprano, what was that fucking place? I forgot that one. I can't remember fucking his place, but Tony Soprano, that was another one. There was five different places, and uh, you had to get permission to go ahead to make you get tappers. He's got, like, say, 15 people and he's gone. You had to get um, people to ask the other people to see if they could whack him the call. Whack him. I said, where the fuck's that come from? Whack him. He was telling me, John, whack him. <laughs> whack him. What are you saying? He said, for your name. He said, it comes over. He said, I was talking, he was talking about me on a mercer, I think the boxer. The black lad, I can't remember his first name now. He was a really good boxer. But he was talking on that show about his, how good he was a boxer and stuff. He went, my friend Brian Cockles, he got it wrong a bit, but anyway, from the UK, he's brought me back. He said, but he'll be back. He said, he can fight for fun. He can fight. He said, them, them, British, are, them British are really tough guys. He said, yeah, it was good. It was nice. I mean, he's talk, I think about three different shows he's mentioned me on. Like, no matter about massive shows in America, so people obviously see your name. There's another lad there, uh, he did the documentary about me. The black lad, he, he's digested all of them and said this is what Brian was like to the Americans over there so for them to do that it shows you your name must be big and they wouldn't be doing things like that you don't see that idiot the certain person's documentaries getting dissected digest, digested and read on the internet and from America you don't see any of them because the shit the McIntyre now has been seen in 19 different countries and it's seen 75 million views which is phenomenal isn't it? for somebody just in a little kid from a fucking council estate in Teesside to get to reach them type of figures, it's amazing. I think yeah, everyone's okay in the chat, and everyone's smart, smart and nice. Uh, Brian, brothers, how, and then, uh, yeah, we're all good. Are you David Jenkins? Are you Ryan? Son, Elmo Biker, I've been a biker with there. We're not fucking cosmos up there in the day of getting stolen. Like a lot of chases up there. There's a lot of, I think it was a, I'm sure there was riots up there as well, fires in Biker. There was in Newcastle, there was in Stockton, in Teesside, there was three riots, two nights. Jenkins, yeah, it's really warm. Yeah, so the, all these governments are corrupt. Someone said to me, the further you go up the tree in the government, the more corruption it is. And the further you go up in governments, the more corruption. I mean, look at that. Look at the bullshit about the UFOs, all the lies they told and all that shit about that poor Jesse, that was his first name, Jesse something he was called. Jesse, can't remember his second name, Jesse something he was called. He was a he was a c- captain or colonel in the poor country. He said, found an alien spaceship and the next two days later he had to say, oh no, it was just a weather balloon. You could tell the difference in the shape and the stuff. It's not a weather fucking balloon, what was there? They made him do it and he looked terrible for years, then it all came out the truth. He was actually telling the truth. But you're not allowed to talk. It's like the police, the police or army or doctors or lawyers, they sign an official secrecy act. So anyone divulging information that haven't had permission of saves to murder and somebody's died in a murder and the family haven't been divulged that information, the people who divulge it get fucked because that is not only that can't be divulged until you speak to the members of the family and get permission. If the members of the family have asked for it and they've been said no to it, how can somebody else come along? and get that information 
if the family can get it, that's that's pure corruption, conspiracy. Definitely a conspiracy that. Really good, really good. They they only my my eyes bad, and my neck's a bit being a little bit sickly today. Feel really good. You only get that feeling everything's coming good. I just know it's coming good. It's like before when I've gone to court and I've had like say fifteen people against me. Fucking hell, fifteen statements gone in, and then we thought like three months down the line, there's only fucking four left or something or five. So they've all gone to fucking Blackpool for the weekend. Oh, not the weekend. They've gone say Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And the court case is Tuesday. They're not, they're not there. There's no one to go to court. So they've all gone on holiday <laughs> and got paid money off someone and went to Blackpool for fucking four to five days. So when the police go looking for the, the, the addresses, they're not here. They've gone away. They've gone, they've gone abroad or something. They'll say the people, like say the kids at the house who are adults as well. Oh, they've gone away for a couple of weeks. They can't do a phone call. They can't do a thing because if they call cases on and they don't turn up, the case is called, it's been, it's been acquitted. So you get kicked out. Point the law, there's a lot, I know the law on the inside, I know every little move. I was talking to my friend David, who was a barrister, he went, Brian, you fucking really, really know the ins and outs of the, the criminal law, you, you really do. You know, why do you think I've got offered for 40 odd years for Cleveland Police? Because I'm not an idiot. I don't make mistakes like other people. I make sure I go over something, I'm going to do it a million times and think, right, I'm the police now, and I'm, I'm CID, and I'm the drug squad, and I'm the murder squad. What would you do to catch Brian Cockrell? First of all, I'd infiltrate someone in his gang. Second of all, I'd bug his house or his car. And I'd tail him and follow him. So all you do there is get bug detectives, check all your house. The people you work with, you make sure the people you've worked with for the last fucking 10, 20 years. I worked with people for like 20, 30 years and stuck with the same people. I never went to jail. Never got jail. Only got jail for driving offences. Never got caught for shootings, alleged murders, kidnappings, drug offences. Never got caught. The people when they worked with me who were working, if they got caught as a courier, they'd get two years. I'd make sure they got money every month for the family while they're in jail because they do like two years for you. But you've got to make sure they're safe. And then they'll go back to jail any other time for you. But yeah, and when I mean, you go to see them, everyone's looking at the thing. Oh, it's fucking, it's capitals, man, and you need to leave them alone. See, they were getting bullied, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't let any fucking get bullied. Denny, bro. One, two, three. Subs, BC Biscuit. Oh, I have Stephen Ray. Is that Stephen the other night? We were talking to the one I have been accidentally got him, took off through that fucking idiot. If it's you, Stephen, from the other night, mate, I um, love you all the well, so you, you're welcome on this channel anytime. And if you want to ask me any questions about trains or anything, I'm on here texting away, brother. Yeah, it was one lad out well, and three of them appointed to, and he got took down called Steve. I'm not sure if it is. It. I went, fucking hell, I felt awful. You know, you feel terrible, like, fucking. The poor lad's been asking me a question, I've took him off, but it wasn't because of Stephen. It was because of that fucking idiot pretending to be people who were in the chat. He's done it that many times. Freedom knows exactly where I'm on about. And, um, yeah, we just fucking make sure everyone's safe in here. Like, share. Yeah, don't forget to like and share. To leave, to forget about Emma Cockrell sticking her nose into my business here. Get out, yo. Get out the chat. Nosey Emma, get out. <laughs> She's lovely, isn't she, Emma? Class. She's so funny, yo. She comes in and does this mad dance like that. Like, you know, like, like It's like, do do, 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 do. you remember um, Vincent in Pulp Fiction when he's dancing with the big tall guy, I can't remember him now. Really funny, from six foot, and they're dancing. To do that mad dance on the uh, Pulp Fiction, Pulp Fiction actor, she could do that dance on Pulp Fiction, and she's hilarious. She's like that with the bump sticker on. Mad in this house, you know, we're like mental cases. We're all crackers. We're always laughing, Joe. Well, Peter to what? I've seen tonight. I've seen Peter. Where is he? He's not going. I might be bad. We might be tired. I think he was tired today. That's it. I said to Peter, you know what it is, Peter? He's 52 now, and I'm 59. I said, well, what it is, Peter? If we were dogs, we'd have been put down fucking 10 years ago, and he just pissed himself laughing. You know what? You're right, big fella. <laughs> if we were animals, the vets would say, put them down, put them down. <laughs> but the amount of times I've been fucking bullets and woods past my lungs, and fucking people trying to stab me, but they have stabbed me. 
I'm still here to scan the stand or I said they said this to them John Elise of the East East. John's the same as me. He drives drive, me I used to have a convertible driving around. He drives around the Nolly, he drives around the New York. He wants us to go, we want to go over and see him. He's asked us to go and stay with him you know, when we get back on our feet and all the shit's all over the way. But imagine going up there with the mafia sat at the table and they're fucking places where they all go and you're like, what the fuck? I'll still go in my trap. So John said, I don't give a shit. He said, you just be yourself. He said, I said, we'll do some taxes, Johnny, but you had to go down here. He's laughing his head off. We'll do some taxes, Johnny. He was just really laughing. He said, no, he said, this, he said, you were the real deal, Brian. Like they said, he said, your name doesn't come over to somewhere like this in America over the pond for years and years and years. And that's just something special. He said, but I knew you were the real deal. So as soon as I started talking to him, because you do the what is it called? If you're on the same page, you've done the same things, you know someone was in your game. So somebody could run and be like an artist, and somebody was like, I think I'm gonna close because he couldn't read him, you see, because he's an artist or some or somebody who's, who's good at whatever he does, like a mechanic or something, I wouldn't have a club. So but when somebody's in the gangster, you just look in their eyes, you can tell by the eyes of the minister of the soul, and you can tell that you know, when you look in their eyes, you can tell by their facial expressions if the real deal, and you can tell the bullshit. Bullshitters, the bullshitters, that's all they are. The wannabes, Denny. Prayers to you. Well said, Stephen. Well, well said, my brother. Yeah, I, I just can't get this off. It looks now, it looks like that. I really can back the back mirror, mirror image, isn't it? Yeah, they say your eyes are the mirror to the soul. What that means is you can see the reflection in who you are with your eyes, you can tell. What type of people are you? can look at some people around you and go, oh, fuck that, he's a psychopath. You just go and you can tell same, same, same people try to look tough, they just look stupid. You don't have to look tough if you are tough. You know, I know lads who are really like pretty, pretty boy lads, you know, faces and all the rest of them, perfect, the clothes are perfect, the nice suits and all that, and they look like fucking hell. Knock it on two seconds and they can fucking fight for fun. Never judge a book by its cover. I've seen like the Frankie Appen. Seven and a half stage stone, strawweight champion of the world, world champion for Madison Square Garden, um, won, won over there. 17 fights in America, he won in the 40s. Really nice man. He did be a champion as well uh, when he was young, schoolboy champion. You just know certain people. It's like poor old Matty Joseph's hair, but bless his soul. That's that an animal, what he did with that old man. That, you know, that fucking dog, what they call all that dog thing. Horrible what he did to that old man. That's one of the things I can't forgive the old man. Myself, it's not so bad. I mean, I can't forgive. I'm a brother Bobby and people, my dad and my mum and my family. But like, man, he was a man, he was fucking the eight, getting on about 78 year old, getting all that shit at that age. Terrible. Like, he wouldn't give any way to me. Grabbed my hands when I was walking out that door. Or oh, this one, one in the living room. He said, Please, please don't give in. Keep fighting. Don't let him win. Please don't let him win. He said, I went, I'll never let him win. I promise you, on, on, on your soul, if you, you don't make it, which I think you will make it, but he didn't. The poor two weeks later, he passed away. I had loads on my mind, I'm really depressed. John, Ryan, John, David, thank you. Oh, my God, I've had me on my I had depression recently. Uh, after S. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't make do that, so you can't fucking do that things like that. You make yourself a hundred times worse, mate. A million times worse. You need to fucking breathe, breathe, get yourself right. Like you drink, drink plenty of water, eat good food, get out of bed in the morning, and just have a little meditation where you get out and think, we'll have a great day today. Nothing's going to bother me. If I put my clothes on the wrong way around, and there's no such thing as bad luck, all that shit. Or oh, if I spill a bit of salt, no, you don't have to throw it over your shoulder. It's all shy. What, what happened to the man next? In the fucking table next year gets in his eyes, blinded him. Can't be that good looking to throw salt over his shoulder. The man next fucking table got blinded off it. <laughs> Any time, my friend, yeah, you, yeah, we're all here for each other. There's no problem. Anyone has to text me, I'm, I'm, I'm there for you. But you need to just try and get out of there. that depression is a horrible thing. I've had it myself. But if you keep thinking about it and, and you can make yourself worse every day, think, I'm going to be depressed, I'm going to be depressed, I'm going to be depressed because you're telling your brain to be depressed. So then you start being depressed, so you've got to switch it the other way. You've got to say, tomorrow I'm getting out of bed, like Brian said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to get a wash, get a shave, I'm going to make myself right, go and get some food. I'm going to walk down the town, go and see somebody I haven't seen for a while, get a family member or someone you can trust, and go and talk to them. 
the worst mistakes is staying in bed and not getting doing anything and not talking to any fucker. If you sit in silence, silence is great when you meditate, but sitting in silence on your own and thinking of the worst things in the fucking planet is not a good thing to do because you start actually going into a mode where you start doing it every day. You start getting upset. I'll just stay in bed all day. I'm not getting up. I'm not getting up, which is the worst thing you can do is not get out of bed in the morning. Even if you get up at 10 o'clock, so I get up at about 11 o'clock every day, 10, 11 o'clock, sometimes 12, when I'm bad. But I'm still getting up, I'm still training. When I wasn't training, and when I was just sat in the bed, depressed to fuck, you just think I'm fucking depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed. So your brain keeps thinking it, so you, your body keeps producing them chemicals that makes you depressed. If you get up every day and go, oh, I'm going to be fucking, I'm going to have a panic attack today. I'm going to have a panic attack, you know, I'm going to have a panic attack. So your body, your, your mind, but your body does what your mind tells it because your mind controls your body like a microchip in the computer. So you've got three and a half pound marble in your head, which is like like a microchip. So that microchip's going, going to be bad. I'm going to have a panic attack. I'm going to, tomorrow I'm going to end up fighting such and such. So you start manifesting things that you don't even really know it's going to happen. So you start convincing your brain. So then your brain convinces your body to have a panic attack because it keeps in it. So you set yourself up for it. It was my mate, Steve Norton, who was a clinical psychologist about 20 years i'm quite good at it but he's like on a different planet compared to me but he's talking with autism right you really do know your stuff he said i love the way you explain things to people especially of council states who struggle to when you go to a doctor's they'll go take this and do this and do this and do that and you go in what the fuck's he just said to me i'm on a club so you come up the doctor's thing i've been in there 15 minutes he's talked to me i've got a clue what he said because they give you big daft fucking long words like that instead of breaking it down like an analogy what you would understand so they break it instead of breaking it down in the layman's terms they give you big words what they know and psychiatrists know and doctors know but we fucking know but I, I know myself because i've done that many times what they're on about but when you take somebody in they went i don't understand what you've got about so i've gone with people and i explain to them and the doctor said thank you for doing that but they don't know the talk of people i've come they don't know the talk for people like us of council states they haven't got a clue See, they're there great because the doctors, they've never had depression. 99% of them have never had depression. They've lived in big, massive fucking houses. 100 million fucking pounds, fucking 100,000 100, pounds, 200,000 pounds a year job. You know, everything's free, the fucking, but they, get the, they don't have to struggle for food. So we struggle because we, we struggle to put food on the table for your family. You struggle to pay for your bills and your mortgage, your electric and your gas and your water. All it is this country is tax, 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 tax. It's all they do, tax you. I'm right, right, I'm off to work, mate. Denny Old School, love you, son. Um, I hope you're feeling a little bit better, my old pal. Um, anytime you want to pop on, say you're welcome, son. Yeah, you have a good day tomorrow and think about you. You know that. He's a nice kid, too. Ah, he's just completely fucking. Definitely, thank you for all of us. Yeah, and for all of you as well. Yeah, thank you very much to you as well, Brian you'll get there Ryan you just got to try and think positive 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 and what you've got to learn to do is love yourself if you can't love yourself you can't love your kids you can't love your mom you can't love your dog you have to look in the mirror and go I'm looking good today I'm looking good need for a bit take a better way off do this do that but you're looking good love you you're doing brilliant love you you've got to say that to yourself to make your brain feel good you can't sit there you don't like you say, don't like what you see in the mirror then that's when you have mental problems as well, mental health problems. You've got to say, I'm going to get, they're being done today, I feel great. I love myself and I love my family, I love my son, I love my dog, I love my dog, I love my fish. I love, love, I love my job. And think like that, positive. When you start going, fucking hate him, fucking hate him, he's easy. And when you have that negative energy, it drags you down like a magnet. It, it, it just, you, you, you stick to it like no piece of metal. The magnet, you do that and the metal just goes straight to it. That's what happens when you're negative. You have negative comments and negative vibes and negative results in your body. Your body starts going negative. You start thinking negative every day. You get more and more depression and more and more down and down and down. And you stop producing the high, like your semitrom, semitromin and your semitonin and your gamma and your beta doesn't produce. You start producing bad chemicals. And then that's when you're in the shit really bad. Holbeck, even by Easter greetings from Holbeck. Okay, Brendan. Cuff, uh, everyone tweeting, yes. Yeah, it's bad. I agree, brother. Professional view. 
Who's supposed money? Probably GP. Yeah, well, there was a fucking one you in there, so you pay ten pound a month for a fucking prescription. You don't need a psych. psych need a low and good one for you. Anyone suffering from migraines, really bad headaches. So here's a couple of tips I'll give you. So migraines, bad headaches, are stuff when you haven't got enough water in your body. So your brain's ninety percent water. So if that dissipates down to maybe sixty percent, that's when you have the headaches. So what you do? We get a pint of water. Drink it slowly over an hour. Within an hour, I'll guarantee you that pint of water goes into your brain and then your headache goes. You don't need to take these fucking neurofen paracetamols because every time you take these type of medications, they damage your liver, they make your blood pressure go up high and everything like that. And they, they end up bending your stomach, they line your stomach, give you ulcers and everything. So the least amount of drugs to get, if you need them, but they're like we're on now, if you need them, you have to take them because obviously you've got your mind with the pain. But so you say, people, I'm going to get me an ambulance, get me an aspirin. And there's another thing, people have aspirins every day to help them with blood pressure. But sometimes them aspirins, I've known one last, he, he, he had it, it burned through his esophagus, right through and put a hole in his esophagus. So once your esophagus got a hole in it, you can repair it. There's nothing can be done. And it was the, it was the aspirin that did it because it bends right through. They're really fucking dangerous. A lot of people say they've got bad, bad uh, blood pressure, bad heart, so it thins out the blood. And that's why people die this much when they're on steroids or they're high they're on top of the blood pressure high because what happens is your blood blood congeals which means goes thick like gooey when you're when you're in danger it starts thinking so also it helps you if you can but when you run them out see full of speed or coke i know people have been stamped and shot to death and they've died because if they never had the cocaine and well, the, the ecstasy that they lived, what happens is your blood vessels are massive and the blood just fucking pisses out of you. So it's like a, it's like having a hose pipe of blood coming out instead of a vein. But what you do if somebody's being stabbed, or grab grab the grab a towel or got anything like the, like a top, take it off and put it on take some of the armpit or it's under the chest, get it there and press down really hard on it and stop the blood coming out. And that's how you stop the blood. It'll save the life. I did it with I did um, Hong Kong over in Hong Kong and I said the lad he fell he was he was a Dutch lad and his mate was German it was at the sevens rugby and he all oh, there was these black bags and he tripped and he fucking smashed his head right off the fluff the air. Uh, it was like a like a it was like a square room like that concrete with a dust like a bin in it and he hit that oh he fucking I thought he was dead and he got turned around his heart went unconscious straight away and he was pegged with those any the lad get them there and he pulled these load of tissues I ripped the, the bits. I went, sorry, but no, 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 okay, okay. No, the, the bloke was there from Hong Kong and I compressed it down on his head. We had to wait about 20 fucking 30 minutes for an ambulance. Anyway, he came and his brother went, I thought, like the lad was with me. I don't, the two gay lads, you could tell the value it. And he went, thank you so much. He's crying his eyes out. I said, don't, you'll have me crying in a minute. I said, look, love you all the well. You look after him. You look after him. You, you, and uh, you tell him to look after you. Said, I can't believe what you've done. I can't believe it. So it's nice to help people, isn't it? Just so you get these fucking people just walking along in London, you see them, don't you? Somebody having an act and they just step over and I think you horrible bastard. Horrible. But then people do things like that. It comes back and bites them on the ass in the future, in the in the future. They do something and they realise what they've done. Keeping getting pressure in my left my head on the in the left of my head. Are you sure? I keep getting pressure in the left of my head. Yeah, it could be blood pressure. That it could be blood pressure. It could be diabetes. I'd get. I would go get a blood test for that. Tells you. Could be blood pressure. Or it could definitely be diabetes. It makes you feel like really sh when you're stressed. Up. When you're stressed up, it, it goes hundred miles an hour your blood pressure. And when you've got diabetes, you get that through not with eating the proper foods. You eat too much sugars, and you get diabetes. This is you get the the infant one, which is the one you're born with. And then you get the stage two one, which is the one you probably use. You get tablets to, to stop your blood pressure. But when you get it, no matter what you get, everything has to be looked at. Everything, you know, sugars and everything. So if you take too much and you go hyperglycemic, when not enough sugar in your body, it can kill you. So what happens when you get it? It takes 15 years off your life. When you start losing, people don't realise there's 5,000 amputees a day with blood pressure. Sorry, with diabetes people, they lose their fingers and the thumbs and the toes. All, all, all the way through it the, when you get it really bad when you're getting injections because you've got your beta cells here when you're eating sugar 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 all the time you burn them out so the fucking it's like having the trouble dryer on constantly all day 
every day. It just stuck on a microwave and all day. It'll just stop on a car full of petrol. Have the engine on all day, it's just going to turn off because it's running out of petrol. And that's what happens with your body. So the beta cells, sugar, 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 tea, 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 sugar, 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 tea, fucking cakes, biscuits, shit like that. That's what give you in abundance. So if you don't eat loads of sugar, sugar is the biggest killer about everything. The second one is, uh, second one is um, smoking. Two and three people die out of that of cancer. So three people get cancer, two out of three die now. It used to be one in three, now it's two in three. That's how bad the smoking's got now. It's fucking unbelievable. <coughs> so <coughs> smoking is really bad for cancer. That's the worst thing for cancer, smoking. If you smoke cigarettes and you've been smoking for years, and you, you, if you stop at 44, within two years, three years, your body will go back to normal. 44 is the, 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 the magic number. If you don't stop that, that by the time you're 72, you're probably going to get cancer. Between 40, 44, 72, you get cancer. It's about 80% chance of getting it. But you, if you eat healthy and you train a little bit, couple of times a week, three times a week, a little bit of walking, a little bit of swimming is really good because swimming, if you're overweight, you're in the water, you're not stressing your knees. If you've got like bad injuries like myself and you walk in the water and you fall, you'll hurt yourself because the water saves you. But if you go outside, you go walking. So I think swimming the baths is marvellous to go because you can just hold the rail and walk up and down the rail. Let's say if you fall, you're only falling into the water so you're not going to hurt yourself. I think it's the best thing that that rowing and cross country skiing, I've seen not not real skiing, the other one, the stip simulator, you can go on there, believe them. They're really good there. They reckon that the cross country skiers, the rowers, and the mountain hill bikers are the fittest people on the planet. Them rowers actually row and row and row and they row till they pass out. I was training my one. Fucking hell, I thought I was quite fit. I said, What are you talking about? And he's like, Oh, no, we do it till we pass out. I went, Fucking hell, that's how bad it is. That's how mentally hard it was. The, all the roads, long distance roads and stuff, with all the Thames, they're absolutely unbelievably fit. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe how, how good they were. Trent Rabbit, happy, packed in. Oh, brilliant, son. Love the moon for you, son. Absolutely fucking marvellous. Love you all the world. I'm always here for you, know that. Don't start again. It's absolutely manky, mate. Manky. Absolutely brilliant. Packed in smoking. That's absolutely brilliant, that. You can do that. You, 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 that's it. Everything starts getting back to normal. You end up with bad fucking nails, all brown in your nails. You see the old people like my mum's, my dad was terrible. And you see them chain smoking one and smoking another one like that. I mean, what the fuck? You used to have them things that were called green and green and white, the packet was. And they had more tips on them. I can't remember what they were called now. But they were all embassy, embassy, so not embassy regal, embassy, embassies, I think they're called. And they used to have them, um, no tips on them, and he died of cancer. Fuck, you know, we used to do about 80 a day, packs. My dad used to want about 70, 80. My mum used to smoke 100, 100 rollies a day. She stopped smoking about four years ago, I think it is. Maybe two years, yeah, for about four years ago, she was packed in. She started smoking, she was 13. She was 70 odd when she packed in. She's been off for four years now, amazing. She looks mild better as well. Fitter and everything going down the stairs. She had a stroke through the fags. And what they do, they give you many strokes in your head as well, cigarettes. They block the arteries in your in your head and the, the sugar does the same. It blocks the arteries in your, your veins and that's why you have strokes. Then you end up getting cancer and all the other things on top of it. There, Robert, respect, I've tried, but couldn't do it. <laughs> you can do it, mate. If Robert can do it, anyone can do it. And you, you can do it, it's all in your head, isn't it? So, he's done it, he's done brilliant. And the money you save is unbelievable. If you know, you smoke 20 a day, 30 a pot a day, it's fucking ridiculous. The money you've got some people 30 40 pounds a day, you save that up for a year, fucking thousands of pounds. Oh, yeah, it's just really warm tonight. Yeah, poor Kennedy got shot. It's the most, uh. I think it's the most biggest conspiracy theory of all time. But I mean, people did it, who did it, and what did it, but it's definitely the government, it's definitely a conspiracy. There's no way it's just been done by one governing body. It's been multiple people that I think it's helped. But that believe I believe Roswell, like I said, when they had the, when they got the gun, the 
pointed this like a laser later on, not not now, maybe 20 years ago or something, maybe 30 years ago, and they pointed a laser to where the trajectory was, and there was no way it would go past the tree, it was about that thick, the branches, it so would, it would not be able to go past through the bushes and into the back of the, the presence because you couldn't see, you couldn't see where he was in the car, and so it was all shit. They definitely, they definitely murdered him, completely murdered him. 9-11, I think that was done by them as well. I really believe it was. 9-11 was definitely made by them to make this go war with fucking Iraq and Afghanistan. I really believe it was constructed by the the um, CIA. I really think it was them. Fuck, well, I'll be next to go war. <laughs> CIA, I really believe, because when I watched the program, I remember that old man used to do the uh, blown stuff up. Fred Dimdy. This one was like him, but he was massive. He was a really clever ex Ex army military paratechnics, it's called paratechnics with explosives. And he said, For that building to come down, there's no way that little tiny plane that was hundreds of tons, thousands of tons of weight. The building, the big steel girders in it, all the way down the about two miles deep. The girders were in the ground. There's no way that airplane's not brought that down, it was too little, too little. And I looked at him, and I looked at him, listen to him, he was doing it. Yeah, he's right, so the fucking weight would pull it down, it wasn't strong enough. So he goes down into the down below and he shows you the way you'd have to have a, a transit van full of dynamite and another in four corners. And you've seen them, haven't you? Where you see like Fred Dimble when he used to do it, and you go boom and you go bang in the four corners, but then obviously it'll stop. And he goes, oh, come like that. Well, that's how that comes out. It came down the same. That was definitely detonated by an explosive. When he checked, he said, it's definitely, definitely been explosives being used. Uh, so many tons of explosives. If you watch it, it'll, it'll show you. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I didn't get, I did great for broken. I can now put weight on so fast going to update photos on here. Yeah, yeah, you just keep getting, you keep doing what you're doing. I'm proud of you. If you need me for help, just give us a, a text anytime. Try and take a protein drink to bed on the night, not with sugar in, just protein and water. Then when you're asleep, your body grows when you're asleep. So when you train, it's called catabolic, you're breaking it down and then it tears, tears into little tiny microscopic tears. The microscopic tears have to be fixed so you have to have a protein drink, say 30 grams of protein, 30 grams of carbs and maybe um, some amino acids or creatine glutamine with it as well to help you to repair the muscle. So then it's like loads of little builders like trying to fix your muscles. So you go to bed and you go to bed, then your growth hormone opens up. The growth hormone is the one that gives you, see if you take sugars on the night your growth hormone will come out because the growth hormone counter reacts from your pancreas as soon as the growth hormone comes up the growth hormone stops producing with the, it's called the um yeah um, the, 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 it's called the uh, hypothalamus your hypothalamus needs a spark which is the energy of i like to say high intensity in the and that makes it spark and then that sets the fuse off for your hypothalamus to work and that works and it sends out the growth hormone so the growth hormone which, which feeds your body and you can get up to about 400 times more if you don't take sugars the sugars as soon as you get a sugar one hormone counteracts against the other hormone so you your growth hormone is a hormone and then you've got your your insulin is another hormone so the insulin captures break cuts it down so you don't want to be eating sugars if you go to bed with with protein you just want pure protein and so on. I used to have like two proteins in the middle of the night and I'd have two of them. I'd have like pieces of chicken up there and things like that because you can't, chicken and protein, now, you can eat loads of that and chops and all sorts of stuff on the side when it was massive. And you can grow up, but if you have a pro, if you have an energy drink with sugars in, it'll just shut down the hormone, shut down one. I, I explained this to my fucking doctor three times, Dr. Chowdhury. And I come to your house, he said, he came in a, a 9 11 Porsche. He came in, and, oh, I understand the high intensity here. Do you really get it now? He went, he said, you're a genius, you he used to call me soap, man. <laughs> when I first went out to see him, I, I pulled something in me, my arm, and he, oh, that was a skin tag. I need to get a skin tag off. So he said, can you take his top off? I took my top off. He went, Jesus. He went, he just stood there, and the nurse was actually, look at the size of these, them things on his neck. I said, they're the traps. <laughs> he went, so I said, I'll just show him my legs. And I showed him my legs. And what the hell are them? They're just ridiculous. They're not legs, what are they? <laughs> Dr. Chowdhury was just laughing his head off. He was, he was lovely. He was really in his fitness. 
Not the million eight. It's got a bottle there, bro. Yeah, he could he used to call me Superman. We used to go in. I showed him the weights. I was lifting the weight. That's just unreal. That I think it was six plates out on the bench. And showed me. He said, "I can't. I'm doing sixty kilos." I said, yeah, it's "Still good. Whatever you're doing, it's better than doing nothing." They're good at all to tell you. But you eat them, drink them. They're they're good after training, but they're no good if you wait for if you wait for your, your hormone to come out, which is your growth hormone, because it'll just counteract against it. So you don't. You just need protein. Say two times a week, do that. You can't do it every night because you need your carbs to make you grow as well. So twice a week, you just don't have any carbohydrates after when you've trained. And then you take your protein all through the night. Put, like, put in peanut butter and stuff. Go to bed and the hormone just goes boof and it goes through. The night. I think that's for about 14 hours. I think the hormone, growth hormone can stay on for. And I think it can go up to 400 times more than what you usually produce. Because what's happened is you've broken down the body. So the body has to, like, the only thing it can repair it is growth hormone so that's how you do it query him once you double deck double check and query him work out cheaper yeah you can get you can get uh loads of different drinks now you, the best one you can get is whey protein which is the whey protein isolate is the best because it's pure whey isolate there's no sugars in it there's no sugars whatsoever in it because most of the proteins you'll buy a big tub of five kilo oh, it's only 30 quid but out of that 30, out of that five kilo, there'll be probably one kilo of protein in it and four kilos of dextrose. Multi dextrose is just pure sugar. So the cotton here, so you're better off buying the one that's direct and having less because it's going to be better for you because the other one's just full of sugar. It's just the cotton that they're not allowed to they're not allowed to do it in America, but over here they can't. Over here they have to, they don't have to tell you what's in the label and what's in it. So in America they fucking put all sorts. No, sorry, go over here they put all sorts in America, they don't. And if you train, you feel great because you're getting stronger, you're getting fitter, you walk in place and come on, get stronger. You carry the chop and you realise you're getting stronger. My hands are definitely getting stronger now. I'm getting bigger every day now. The doctor said to me, you get better looking every day, Brian. I said, no, doctor, I can't wait for tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody loves that joke. He said, you fucking mad, Joe. Yeah, when the Americans land, I was famous. Always. Fifth photograph. Ryan that's not picture in the famous slow fifth fifth pause week. Good. Where's fucking Carrado going? Has anyone seen Carrado? I've never fucking seen him. I think he thinks I fell out with him. I haven't fell out with him. I just swear it was somebody someone called him pretend to be him, which was that daft cunt. So Carrado, if you're watching, get on the fucking channel and get to my house. I've told you a thousand times. Get to the house and get up to see us. I haven't fell out yet. Somebody said, Oh, I think Brian thinks it. I haven't fell out yet. It's just that, that idiot was trying to pretend to be you. Try, trying to pretend to you. So you one got took off, and because I took you off, that, that, that one off, yours come off as well. It wasn't deliberate. That's why we were waiting for you coming. We still wait for you coming. So you're welcome to come anytime you want. Just get on the live and text me and say, Oh, yeah, Brian, it's okay. Yeah. Medication. Uh, hold on. Have you have have two medication that didn't work to a qualifier? It's pretty easy stuff. Maybe about five quid about fifteen kilogram. It's really yeah, uh, really warm. Imagine the astronaut was on the launch pad of the Apollo mission. There, footage of wired as pro. Yeah, there's fucking all sorts in there. My things. I mean, when you see them walk, what, what you do when they slow it down? I think it was made in a studio. You know, like say um, a studio, like like um, they made another film called Capricorn. One of it was about Mars, but really they take the piss because they went to Mars and they come back and they, they landed in the sea and under the sea they got to this place. But it was a place where they where they, you, know, you see like a man stood there, plastic like people and stuff and houses. Was where they did, and then the part of the desert is where they blow people up. So they had these three astronauts go. And we told you, Philip's not real, but I think they were telling you this is what we did in the to make the moon landings. But when you see them and they slow it down, you can see that they're just walking normal. They've been speeded up the walk while they walk and stuff, but the camera's manipulated with, and you can see they're just walking. 
and when they jump in the area, it's all been you can see it's all been military manipulated. It's marvelous. But the thing it gives me away is there's no there's no wind in space. There's no there's no there's no wind. So how the fuck's the flag blow? How's the flag blow? How the fuck's blow the flag? There's no wind. Come up with some shit like oh he nudged it with his arm or something. No, you can see it constantly blow and the, also something to do with the stars where you can't see them. I don't think because the other side's dark or something at that time or something. So how would the stars be out? I think it is. Oh, you can't see the stars. I can't remember if you can't see them or you can. And that's what gave them away as well. The stars when it's you can't see something with the stars. I can't remember the exact terminology what what he was on about. But either the stars shouldn't have been out or you can't see. Because the stars is on the dark, dark side or something, so the moon would cast the moon type of thing, so you could see the stars or something. Myself, yeah, John David James on Baker. Mike, the card is a comment you need the prescription for the clinic. Yeah. The fucking nightmares, I know these fucking doctors now. I'm gonna go off. I've never had a bad eye in my life. Not like this. What's the GS mean? GS. I don't understand that. GS. GS. I don't watch. I don't know what GS means. I'm lost. Can't you fathom that? Hello, hello. Fathom that, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, I sleep. Yeah, that's okay. Pete, that's okay. Yeah, get to sleep, Peter. You're all right. Don't, no one's calling you, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, we had a good talk today, me and Peter. It was a good laugh. I was just telling them all that we, the, the vets would put us down if we went, went in. If we were on the muzzle, put him down. Put it, Peter down. Peter, Peter can live a little bit longer. Put, put Cockle down. He's fucked now. He's gone. Come on. He's in suffering that much. Put him down. They would put you down if you were dogs, I'm telling you. What about euthanasia? That was the euthanasia that would do with being in hospital. The euthanasia. We need to rest. Mate. Mark Emerson, Mark's a good lad. I've been resting, I've tried to sleep two days and I had no sleep at all. Just fucking constantly awake. You know, like, uh, not on my mind or anything, just. I'm happy. It's just my hand keeps running, right, running fucking down my face, and I'm like get little bits of sticky stuff. And see, I've had stuff for like antibiotics. I've had fucking amino acids on me. I'm sorry, like what they call them, King the Moxel. That's why I'm gonna give some of their Moxel. It's still fucking on. Ned, what's Reiki? Read on Google Ned. Google Ned. Good. Offers free for them. As a lifetime, anyone can expect it. Yeah, Kodak were a big massive company years ago. Monster company. The stuff I've got now is just fucking unbelievable. I can see you from fucking another other white from Mars if they have, they've, they've got plug they've got ships going to Mars and every fucking thing happening up there. There's one that's been going on for about 10 years, 10, 15 years, still going into the distance. I can't remember what it's called now. Something like Capricorn 1, like that Philip, some, some, some name, I can't remember the name of it. A few years ago it was out, and you seen it. It was like a weird shape, and you seen it. It was saying it was aliens again, they always fucking come out of that door. What do you do best? 53 on? Yes, we're talking about John F. Kennedy. Hopefully a lot of people know. A lot of people don't know. If you get in there, you'll be able to see what we said, what we think. The new Asia. Uh, I thought that. <laughs> Alexander Smith. Alexander Graham Bell. He invented penicillin. He actually made it 
and he never made any money off it. He actually didn't want it, and then went to the Americans. The Americans made a fortune, and then there was another one with John Logie Baird. He made the television in Scotland. The Scottish are really clever, and then the hypodermic syringe was made in Scotland, and then we had fucking what was he called? The best whatever. I think his name the Cyrus. Invented every fucking thing. He was brilliant. I think he did about a hundred different inventions. Pet the pen, the pen, the bicycle, rugby, golf, all sorts of Scotland being a little place when you four million people or something, fucking believe him. When the bloke first seen the um the cinema, he ran out the way of the train, there was a train on it, he fucking shit himself out, he was gonna get run over the train, couldn't work it out. Well, if you'd never seen it, you wouldn't be able to work out, would you? It would be impossible. But it showed him the train, the very first train. I think the very first film ever made was a cowboy film. I'm sure it was a cowboy. That was the very, very first film ever made in America. Well, in the world, sorry. Hit the like buttons. I've never been saying that last few days, hit the like buttons. I keep I've been forgetting. Don't forget to hit the like buttons, guys. What well, is the universe is so vast, I believe it or planets have life some sort of life that would be good to know yeah they've definitely got a life there's definitely planets there's definitely see what it is when the big bang went up it's still expanding so it's getting bigger and bigger every day it never gets any smaller it just keeps getting bigger the universe it just keeps getting bigger and bigger where the fuck's it going to end it can't end to say it's infinity and beyond you can't it can't end because it was a big bang went up the god particles in there somewhere they're, 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 they're trying to find the god particle what makes everything but they haven't, they haven't found it as yet. I think they tried it was called the Hexenberg, I think it was called Machine 26 mile uh, circumference. And they put it in there and try to create the Big Bang Theory. But a lot of people said that if they do it, they might end up ruining the world, but it never, you know, conspiracy theorists. It travels faster. And I think the speed of, the speed of light is three, I think it's 368, 371,000 miles an hour. Okay, now. It's fucking ridiculous, isn't it? The things you can't work out. Oh, that's the worst one. I think the work, the most strange thing for me is that one. Right, you can have a gun here. You can shoot the gun with a bullet. Travel about seven the velocity, seven hundred miles an hour. And you can have you can have a bullet in your hand here, like that. Pull the trigger, drop that. By the time that bullet gets to there, that bullet there, travelling at 700 miles an hour, that one here you drop from there, we both hit the floor at the same time. You look at it being these fucking crackers. I'm telling you, so you go bang, but you go bang and not drop that one. The bullet goes down here, it still falls at the velocity of 16 feet a second. That bullet travelling still hits the glove floor because it's still the um, the gravity is falling out. Have a look at it, you won't believe it, there's no way. Because you think that would keep going and going, but it just hits the floor the same as the bullet you drop here. So they both hit the floor. But it's further on, you'll see the bullet, like fucking right down the other end of the wherever. But when you video on videos, if you get where you see them do it on a video, you'll see the bullets both hit the floor. But well, the ones right up the other end of the runway or wherever they're at, I think they did it on an airport thing, like where the Concorde was. And the both bullets hit the floor the same. So that one's going that way, that way, that still hits on the floor the same time as that one. It's like, if you have a hundred pound weight and a ten pound weight and you drop both of them off a hundred foot bridge, both of them fall at the same ratio of gravity. So both the hundred pound weight will still hit the floor the same as the two pound weight. They both hit the floor. You can tighten the house and get a marble and get something bigger, like something big, like a bowling ball or something you've got one. And drop this and you'll see on a fucking on a some type of ball, you know, I'll take some type of I don't know, plant pot or something. You'll see, doing the garden obviously won't break, and they both hit the ground at the same time. And it was actually, it was him out of the tree, wasn't it? He was sat there eating an apple. Isaac Newton, he was the one who, the apple hit him on the head when he was sitting outside near the tree. And he thought, how the fuck has that fell from there? How did it work? How he worked out the gravity, how gravity works, said Isaac Newton. Alexander Graham Bell, he invented the phone. But who answered the first phone? There was only one phone. Well, the fuck, <laughs> well, the fuck did he phone anyone? There was no phones. He was the only one who invented it. Alexander Graham Bell, yeah. And then he did the he did the uh, 
he did the light bulb fully did it faster than he did it better uh, he made the light bulb he was really clever him. up down to graham down and then there was the other one who did the lighting i can't remember his name now he did the lighting rod he was clever yeah i like i like to learn things Mads, Mads, Brian, Scotch is better than deep fried. <laughs> yeah, they did. They, deep fried fucking women, deep fried fucking kids, deep fried dogs. Anything goes in the fucking um, in the fridges in the bin, over in Scotland. Everything gets fried. Everything gets fucking fried. Ah, look, we forget for side buttons, guys. Yeah, 135 minutes yeah so it's looking good with the old stuff that's been given to the place can't, i can't believe can't believe what the same person said like okay you now something absolutely fantastic so this i spoke to a barrister today and one of the other day was, was a friend and he said the same he said this is going nowhere this it's absolutely good it's got no no where they put it it's got no legs on it got no legs you know to so keep going you know you see a ball and you see it going in a football you know, it's got no legs on it or a snooker ball going in the pocket you know, it's got no legs this is what this is like it's got no legs now when the other person said the stupid things that he said the other week when you sat in that chair um wherever he was sat what he said on there is fucked everything up he said he absolutely destroyed it like a massive conspiracy theory then you say what he said on that that night links it to conspiracies which is the last thing they want was on them was fucking a conspiracy theory when we've already got a conspiracy why they never couldn't else the 999 phone calls so later on i'll probably get killed you know the other thing the fucking cunts have done this to brian they've, they've murdered him because he's come out with these conspiracies all the time he's been right it's these fuckers being <laughs> you might know like 10 to 20 years 30 years on the line so that happens to me they'll go they've done this because he was telling us all the conspiracy theories so like that'll be the next one i'll be the conspiracy theory next Jack's man's house had blew up and he was killed by a. Uh, they come out of shite on like say the gas fire blew up or something. Or oh, fell down stairs, broke his neck. You know, the fucking line comes. Get my neck too tight, the brick, it's full, it's, it's full of metal. Don't let them bullshit you when they kill me. <laughs> the pro gun bullets go really quick, like the cross flies. Pro gun bullets, really quick. Yeah. They're about, they do about 700 miles an hour. I think it is the velocity, but it's still. If you have check it out, both bullets, you fire that one there and drop that that one in your hand of bullet like that. Drop it as that one gets fired. That bullet there will fly there. But when you see the tag, when you see it on the when you see it hitting the floor, the, the slope right down, very, very slow. And you can see the one right down the runway. And then the other one they both just hit the floor at the same time. Oh, that's been possible, but it isn't. It's the ratio of gravity how it falls. Here's a good question. It has been puzzled to this to this day. Anyone knows comes you can buy an air rifle. Air guns are over the counter, like Glock Air, yeah, right there. Counter air lock off a canal lock counter, but can't get a proper one. you're not allowed any guns off you get caught with any firearms even if they're imitation and you get caught with an imitation firearm you get five yeah if you get a gun, caught with a gun the guidelines if you've got caught with a gun with bullets you get 10 yeah so you're not allowed any firearms any anything that looks like a firearm you're not allowed to have if you pull up it out and mess about with something like an imitation clock you go to jail for it and you get either a lad who pulls a water pistol up he's off his own smack he painted it black he's had to full of paint and everything and that's quite went in the garage and fucking stopped him Robbed the one with the fucking water pistol. It was green water pistol. You could see the paint dripping off the thing. He got caught with the gun. The paint was dripping on the, on the, on the camera. You could see it dripping. It off, smacked out of his head, but he got caught. He got eight years for it. But it was a water pistol. But even if you went like that in your pocket, like say, I've got a gun here, and you've got it behind here, pretending, you still get done for that robbery because the intent to do it's there. It's the intent to supply. You want to go and sell drugs to someone and they catch you with the drugs. You've still got the intent. Or do you say, like, that's me, you and him beat that lad up. That's a conspiracy to go to cause violence. So they're, they're all the laws have changed now. You say you've got to get conversed with them because everything's changed. But if you get caught with any type of firearm, it's classed as a, a weapon still. They've changed all the laws. Yeah. 
you say, I don't know that, the per pound squares inch. The blue PSI and air gun under. Took me ash pads to look at that. Yeah, but it's not a Glock, is it? An imitation Glock, it's still classes of firearm. I think the air pistols, I think you have to have a license. I think it's a, I think it's shoot, you still have to have a license for them and a place to shoot with them. Or like a range or something. Buy an heavy fucking thing, like the AK 47, heavy fucking thing with the lot. Fucking absolutely unbelievable. If I ran out, ran out of bullets, could get him on. Fucking nightmare, guys. Made about 2,000. So in the round scrap yard, fucking use them all, mess them out. I'm going to get some more for life, but I've got no more. You have to go to fucking Afghanistan. <laughs> fucking hell. Man, they're a nightmare to get. Truth sets you free, empowered, yeah. When you tell stupid lies, you look daft. That's why I'm telling the truth, man. Like, I'll like, come on, go look. I fucked up with this. I, I, I've already done this. I've already done that. Like, when, when, when I was going for the British strongest man, I fucked up because I, I went on the drugs. I, I fucked it up. A few times when I went to do a film, I was going to be in. With uh, Duke, Duke McKenzie, he was a, a car thief from Birmingham. And another lad came to the lad's name, he looked like, he looked like, um, I can't remember his fucking name now, the black lad who was really good. American dancers and scenes, every kind of fucking name now. Really funny. He, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy, no, it wasn't Eddie Murphy, sorry. He looked like Eddie Murphy, the lad, sorry, he looked like Eddie Murphy. And he could sing and dance and everything like him. He was going to be the next top thing. And I was going to be their mind now. But I fucked up again on the phone, daft drugs. I've, never, I've been off for nearly five years, September the 22nd, coming this year. I'll have been off for full five years. I don't, I don't even think about it, but if I do think about it, it makes me feel like I'm going to be sick. I hate it. I've trained my brain now. I don't even get a buzz even thinking about it. I don't think, oh, I'll have to be the gear. Don't get nothing, nothing. Don't get nothing out of it. I get a better buzz coming around after that and training and eating properly and doing the court case, what I'm doing. I see things that David said to me, he said, you're really good at working things out. My mate was a bastard. He said, really clever. Skipped shooting, PSI and air cop. He took me to I be legit. You couldn't shoot no come with two PSI, could you? You fucking, with the fucking, with the fucking, with the fucking, the pen, with the fucking P, the P in it. <laughs> you have more pressure off the pen. Do you know a little pen with the, with the P in it? That would be more powerful than two PSI if you fucking know in it. Wouldn't even break your skin. I remember the little the old guns, the potato ones, and used to put them in used to shoot each other with the fuckers. Used to knack like fuck in the back when you got shot. But they went strong enough to penetrate through your skin. Yeah. Per second. Me Natty Wilson. Are you so? You all right? And it's clicking. Decoration as long as you don't take out like Dave Dave Cody. <laughs> oh, the echo. Pounds per square inch, I go target shooting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you've got to, I've got to say you've got to have a shoot range, haven't you? I, I used to go shotguns with the shotguns at Gisbrecht. You pay on there, you go in there. If I was going to do a job, Day, the next day, like a robbery, I'd go there. So I found a residue on me, and then when I was going to do a job, and I did use a firearm. While I was at the shooting club yesterday, I got a camera, he let me in. There's the, there's the thing, the ticket when I went in, and there's the car park ticket when I went in on the range. Captain Football cut the pound residues off that. So if you do get involved in a shoe out and out for the foot down, robbery, whatever, you've already got the residue on you from the day before, wear the same clothes, put, so put your clothes away. And then by the next day, so we've got the clothes on. We've got the kids just get with you when you have another shave, it gets under there, under there. We've got your nose and in your ears and everything. But yeah, I never caught it all on me. Best thing you're going to do is give you a powered residue test. It's called the paraffin test. I'm going to have one fucking 12 of them. Reading me, but I, I hear what for over the years. I thought everyone had fucking mad things then. It was fucking mad. Those people get shot every year, waiting them days. But there wasn't, there wasn't an, an, an abundance of white weapons. It was mainly shotguns. People getting shot with. 
uh, lads army lads would bring stuff back you know from the army because used to, people used to go in the army years ago for four years you had four years in germany you go to Ireland, germany for two or four years i think it was you'd be in there and come back and fucking all different five types of firearms but it, was, it wasn't against the law have them then you could have them in your house you, you didn't need license and fuck all it was later later really later on it was you could have them for fucking shoot rabbits and all sorts you go on people's lands like a farmer's land you go shoot with the, with the farm that was a good one shoot on there with the farm and you'd be up maybe bring them up the residue was off his shotgun he was shooting all the like, there's the rabbits he gave me put some rabbits in the house there's the rabbits who shot there the pellets and they've got the most the pellets are in the rabbits still shoot them yesterday they look at you and go for okay they know like you they know but you've done it but you've ever done and they think clever comes they just like hey mate no no yeah, I haven't seen you for ages like that. You will send fucking hell. I hope you're okay. Nana's okay. I'm fucking well. I knew. I knew something wrong. I thought you'd been bad of you. Yeah, ah, good. You in, bro. Yeah, I feel good. I feel really good. Comes from shooting range, yeah. You get me fucking nice. I've used to talk about fire arms on the year top. Fuck all about me. Demma. I never knew that. i wolf. That was over us and that duck. The duck's been shot, look. The duck's been killed on the range. Stream yard duck's been killed. Even the duck's got a pair of earphones on. Fucking hell, look at the spine on us, look. The duck's got the earphones on. <laughs> I am one to eat. And, uh, she, 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 she. I said, I have to go soon. I'm starving. I'm probably starving now. Um, I'm going to be around about two hours. Yeah, I'm coming out seven in there. Nah, yeah. Hey guys, I'm gonna shoot. Um oh, only shoot. Okay, well, that was funny. That wasn't no pun intended there. Yeah, it's been class for you all again. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, we'll be back on tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed the night. I've enjoyed it immensely. And uh yeah, hope you're all okay. God bless you all. Oh put me back. What the hell? Hey, hey, hey. It's a beautiful day. Oh, can I do what? Oh, Bane, I've got a big bad problem. Hold on, I just end the stream. Oh, Bane, right. I've got a big bad problem.